Yep. Okay. So this is the loop for the man loop space maintainer. This is what we want to end up with. This is going to get spot welded onto the band and then we're going to solder it. I'm going to go through the steps of bending this again. I'm going to start off with a piece of wire that's about, I'll oh, say three inches, maybe four inches long. And the first bend is going to be around the center of the wire and it's going to be a, a fairly shallow curved bend, which is going to go on the distal of the abutment tooth. We want this to go around the distal of the abutment tooth, and I'm going to mark it at just about the width of the crest of the ridge here. So I've marked the crest of the ridge. I'm going to grab the wire. I'm going to hold it so that this, this curve is parallel to the occlusal plane. I'm going to hold it in the pliers so I can bend it perpendicular to the occlusal plane. So the wire here is parallel to the plier, and I'm going to bend it straight down 90 degrees. Let me just zoom out here a little. And then the other side, again, grab it at my mark, straight down 90 degrees. So I now have something like this, where this is parallel to the occlusal plane, and these wires are perpendicular to the occlusal plane. I'm going to start bending the loop. The loop is going to go distally in the direction of the, the point or the curve here. So your loop is going to go this way, which takes it towards our tooth with the band on it. The way I like to do it is by grabbing the loop in the corner there and then grabbing my wire fairly far from the pliers and then by twisting both my, my hand and with the pliers and my hand with the wire, I can make a fairly wide curve like that. Now it's important that when you make this bend, the two wires are parallel to each other. They're parallel, but they're going different directions, opposite directions. This bend has to be a full 180 degrees. Come to the other side, again grab it, I've got the um, curve here around the distal of the abutment tooth is straight with the plier. I'm going to grab the corner, take the wire fairly far from the plier, and I'm going to make another fairly wide and gentle bend. I want to adjust these loops a little bit. Your three prongs work pretty well for adjusting the shape and the sizes of the loops a little bit. Just straighten this out having done that. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is open up these 90 degree corners. This wire will not fit onto the model right now because of those 90 degree corners. So I'm going to open those up by putting the square beak of the plier inside the 90 degree corner and squeezing just a bit. I want to open these up just enough so that the wire is going to fit over the ridge now without interfering in the ridge and I want the loops to come up so they just come to the mesial of the band. So that's not too bad right now. The bend here on the distal of the abutment tooth should still be parallel to the occlusal plane. Now it's a matter of small adjustments. I just want to make sure that the wire is not interfering with the tissue and the loop should be sitting about one to two millimeters off the tissue. So if I hold it here on the, on the buckle, so it's got a good shape on the buckle, it's about a millimeter off the tissue, it's, uh, it's sitting on the distal of the tooth, but here it's a little far from the tissue here 
and a little close to the tissue there. So I'm going to bend it in a little bit at this point, and I'm going to bend it out a little bit at that point so that it follows the contour of the tissue better. And this is going to be different for every model, for every patient, for different bands on the same model, each one will be just a little bit different. So these are all just very, very small adjustments. Now what I want to do is where it's coming up to the mesial of the band, I want it to follow the contour of the tissue. So I'm going to bend it in a little bit here, and I'm going to bend it in a little bit there. And up here close to the tooth, I'll bend it a little more. So I'm going to bend, I'm going to, going to curve it in a little here so it follows the tissue, and then a little more so it goes towards the tooth. Over here, I'm going to bend it in again also so it goes towards the tooth. And that brings the wire into the mesial of the band here. So what I need to do now is take a look at the wire and we're going to make about a 90 degree bend about the center of the band. So about there. I'm going to make a 90 degree bend over. But you have to think that right now the wire is running into the band or the tooth up here which is pushing it away. So you kind of have to imagine where the wire is going to end up after you make the bend. So I'll make the bend here and I want the bend to come out on an angle like this. I don't want the bend to come straight back um, parallel to the ridge because if that happens it's going to run into the tooth, the mesial of the tooth and the band. So I'm going to grab it here and I'm going to angle it so it's going to bend that direction out from the tooth. I'm going to bend it right over about 90 degrees. And that's now a little bit away from the tooth. So I can bend it in over here. This is where three prongs can be very useful. Just to bring that in a little bit. Creates a curve which goes around the tissue. We've got contact on the band there now. And on the lingual arm here, I want to bring this mesial a bit. So right now, the band, this is a little too far distal on the band. So I'm going to bring this a little mesial and a little bit in, a little bit to the buckle. And again, mark where it's going to, approximately where it's going to hit the band. And then bring it out like that again. And eh, we're pretty close there. I need to bring those in just a touch. Or actually, they'll, they'll come in to touch the tooth when, uh, when I contour them in. But I can bring them in just a little bit more to touch the tooth. There we go, they're contacting the band. So now it's a matter of seeing where the, the tag stops following the band and making a, making a bend there. So at that point, the tag wire comes away from the band, so I've marked that. And I'm going to bend it in at that point. Now when I put it back on, 
it runs into the model back here. So about where the distal cusp is, so about there, I'm going to take the wire and I'm just going to bend it out so it doesn't interfere with the model. It also gives me a little handle that I can hold on to. It just makes it a little easier to manipulate this. So we're following the band to there. So make a mark, make a little bend. They're not big bends. These are all very small bends. You can do them again with the three prong, these little bends. And a little bend there. I'll use the three prongs, put the center prong on the bend, squeeze gently, and that makes the bend we need. And now I can come to the lingual. bend here where it stops following the tooth. Again, we're running into the model back here. So I'll bend that out. Now this, I've bent it down. So it's going down on the distal. Not what we want. We want the band, the tag to basically follow the occlusal of the band. So that means that I've just, I've made this angle too steep. I'm gonna grab this and just bring it up a little bit. Your lingual arm can sit higher on the tooth since, whoops. Well, that was a bad thing to do. Your lingual arm, um, can sit higher because the lingual is a non-functional cusp. Just reducing the span to touch. And then like the buckle, this is just making small bends to get the wire to follow the band as closely as possible. Ideally, we'd like to get a perfect, the wire perfectly following the band on both the buckle and the lingual. So there's a few more adjustments I could make. And I'll just futz with this a little bit after, but that, and I dropped it again. By getting fumble fingered. And that's our basic band loop. And the loop is sitting passively. It shouldn't really be grabbing. Like it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to press it on and it grabs the, uh, grabs onto the band. And that is the basic process for your band, for your band, uh, or sorry, for the loop of your band loop space maintainer. Okay. You guys get all that? <laughs>